Hi everyone. I am going to try something new today. Instead of just giving you a rundown of my week, which you kind of can tell from the clips that I post, I thought that I'd do a living and learning. Some of you have visited my blog for a few years and a while ago I used to do a post every week called Living and Learning, where I would sort of go over some things that I was up to as far as knitting goes, what I'm reading, um, some things that are happening in the kitchen, uh, inspiration, things that are happening in the church, etc. And so I thought it might be nice to sort of combine a vlog with clips from my week and also my living and learning because that might be more interesting than just sort of regurgitating what is happening every week, which when it's not a special time of year, when there's no holidays or feast days or um, any special events happening, it can kind of get boring, I would think. So the first thing that's new this week is that I'm knitting something. And last year was a pretty dull year as far as knitting went. <clears throat> and um, I wanted to change that because I do enjoy knitting. So I got some of this yarn. Th these uh, skeins are almost done, but this is Cascade 220 in winter white. And I cast it on for a throw blanket called the Parkington throw blanket. And I will link that in the description box. But this is what it looks like. It's a leaf pattern that keeps repeating. And there's a lot of seed stitch at the bottom, which is just where you alternate knitting and purling and each row you switch it so that it gets this nice little bumpy um, pattern. And I really love this. It looks complicated, but if you use stitch markers and um, let me just show you my pattern. I highlight the parts that repeat over and over again, and I also tend to use post-it notes to kind of keep me in line, because when I'm knitting, I'm usually doing something else. So that's how I do that. And I really, so far, really love this pattern. I think it's really nice. I am using uh, the yarn held double, which is sometimes annoying, and I'm also not using the correct size needle. I did not have a size 15, which is what it called for, it's bulky weight yarn that they called for with a size 15 needle. So I think it's a little more dense than in it's intended to be, but I, I like it. It is not going to be as big as, um, it's yeah, 60 inches by 60 inches. So it's not going to be that big. I think I measured it at about 30 inches. Um, when it's blocked, maybe I'll get to 40 by 40, but that's okay. It's been a very enjoyable re-entry into knitting for me and I'm fine with that. I think that I can see myself doing this again, and if I do do it again, I will buy a size 15 needle and see how that turns out. Um, in the kitchen, today was the first day that I put away my Christmas dishes. I sort of set them on the table and I'm going to wrap them up later today. And I got out our regular china. It's mismatched china that I found at antique and thrift stores and our mugs so that we can use those for breakfast and lunch. We had been using the Christmas tree china. So, Oxford Emma Bridgewater is back out. As far as inspiration goes, I have been very inspired by an Instagram account that someone, one of my friends, sent me. She suggested Alexandra Tolstoy's account to me. She said that she thought I would really love it, and she was absolutely right. So, Alexandra Tolstoy is related to the great Leo Tolstoy. And she is an English woman of Russian heritage who lives in the UK, I believe in London, and she has a cottage in the country. She has three children. She has a, a very beautiful and interesting way of dressing and decorating. She bakes. She's, she's pretty much all of my interests rolled up into one Instagram account, <laughs> which is great. She also travels quite often to Russia um, and she, and to other places, um, but she is Orthodox. So quite often she has pictures of herself visiting different churches in the UK and in Russia. It's just very nice. It's very um, inspiring. It's a great Instagram account if you're looking for it. So it's Alexander Tolstoy. Check it out if you have any interest in England, Russia, Orthodoxy, homemaking, child rearing, 
fashion, um, you'll definitely get a lot out of it. So I will put that in the description box as well. So I'm still reading Julia Child's My Life in France, which is an excellent book. I did have to return the library book because I had not been able to finish it um, in the time allotted to me, which is fine. Um, I ended up liking it so much that I used an Audible book credit to get the audiobook. And that has been terrific. A great book for people who like cooking, who like Julia Child, who like French food, French fashion, just life in France in general. Um, it's not specifically um, about her recipes, though she talks about that a lot. Um, she talks about what she's working on. Well, when she's in France, it's more about their actual life. So it's extremely fascinating. The woman who narrates it, whose name escapes me, is excellent. She's got her, she's got an American accent, which obviously makes sense for Julia Child. And um, she speaks French very well. So she can say all of the words in French and there are copious amounts of uh, names for recipes and streets and little tidbits in French. Um, so it's really, it's, a, it's an enjoyable listen and an enjoyable read. I liked having the book because there were photographs in there. Um, but if you can't get your hands on the book, see if you can get your hands on the audio. As far as church goes, we are pretty much in a holding pattern with very few feasts and things until Great Lent. So this week we had the leave taking of Theophany. We took down the Christmas decorations in church. We are in full swing of house blessings. My husband, we had our house blessed by my father-in-law last week. He had a house blessing yesterday and he has a house blessing today. And I think several more scheduled over the course of the next few weeks. Um, this Sunday is Sanctity of Life Sunday. It's the Sunday before the March for Life. So, that is going to be nice. I'm sure that he will read the letter from the Metropolitan tomorrow, which is usually written very, very beautifully. Um, next Friday, we will be in Washington, D.C. for the March for Life, marching with the Orthodox Christians. So that is it for my Living and Learning post. I hope you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think about the new format. Have a great week.